all involved in the equation and we have to place it equals to zero. Similarly, there is another constant involved in the equation. So here we can write it in the form partial E or partial B also equals to zero. So <clears throat> for the first equation, which is partial E or partial A equals to zero, we have to differentiate this equation and put the result equals to zero. So on differentiating this equation, and this can further be simplified if I can uh, eliminate these brackets. So the inside sign will be also changed just to create an ease in your work. So here now we differentiate partially e or partial a. On differentiating it, we get two times sigma equals to one to n <coughs> yi minus a xi minus b times minus xi. So we got the first equation partially e over partial, partial e over partial e equals to zero. So we make it equals to zero. Similarly, for the second equation, we can write down partial e over partial b is equals to two times sigma equals to one to n yi minus a x i minus b into minus one and the net result is equals to zero. So here we have two questions and now we have to simplify them. If I can drop this third and using only the central part and making it equals to zero, so we can be able to find out the equation a bit easier. So here we write down from the first equation. These two can be dropped down due to this zero and minus can also be dropped down. And remaining x i can be taken inside the bracket. So this gives you sigma i is equals to one to n x i y i minus a x i square minus b x i and the net result is equals to zero. Similarly from the second equation we get sigma i is equals to one to n two will be dropped down minus will be dropped down and the remaining result is y i minus a x i minus b is equals to zero. So these two questions now formed take the form like these two questions. Okay, after finding these equations, we can use the principle of the sigma notation and we can distribute it uh, within the bracket and shifting apart on the right side. So here we can write down the equation of the form sigma i is equals to one to n xi yi I keep this quantity on the left side and shifting these two quantities on the right side. So this gives you a times sigma i is equals to one to n xi square plus b times sigma i is equals to one to n and xi. So this equation now takes the form of this equation. And from the second equation we get sigma equals to one to n y i, I keep it on the left side and shifting these two terms on the right side gives you a sigma i is equals to one to n x i plus b times whenever you apply the sigma on the constant, so this gives you uh, the number of terms which is n here. So this is the uh, formations from these two equations. Now we can erase this to create a space on the board. Okay, after doing this, now the result can further be simplified uh, without any loss of generality. If we can ignore the index, so these two questions now take the form, in a simple form, sigma xy is equals to a sigma x square plus b sigma x, and the second equation gives you from here is a sigma y a sigma x and plus b times n. So these are the two questions which we were looking for because if you remember the curve from where we have taken start was the equation of the straight line and that was fx equals to ax plus b. Or we can write it in the form of y is equals to ax plus b, never mind it. Now you can see here there are two 
unknown in order to find the values will be making use of these two questions and whenever we put in the values of these inside in this in these two questions then we can solve them simultaneously we can find out the unknown constants so one more important thing is <clears throat> this method of least squares provides you the best uh, values for input of the unknown constants so that is why this method is generally considered one of the best method to fit a uh, curve to the given set of points so this is the so far situation in which we have considered the case number one where we are passing a straight line through the given curve now we are moving <coughs> uh, towards the case number two and see <coughs> how actually uh, we can fit, we can find the equation. These are equations which are generally known as the normal equations, okay, for this particular case. Normal equations. So, this is the, these are the normal equations for the straight line. Similarly, we are now constructing the uh, normal equations for the case whenever, whenever we are passing a parabolic curve through the given set of points. So, here comes the case number two. For the case number two, let me erase it from here. Okay, so for the case number two, the curve is say y is equals to or fx is equals to uh, ax square plus bx plus c. And this is the parabolic curve and we are interested in to pass it through the given set of points. In this equation you can see there are three constants involved while in the previous case there were only two constants. So this means for this particular case we must have three normal equations. And how actually we can construct them. So we, we take start from the same result if you remember. E that was equals to the sum of the squares of all the inputs y i minus the function which is a x i square b x i plus c and the whole square. So here you can see I have replaced the function in the equation if you remember in, uh, we have just written down the equation for E there I have replaced f of x by this equation of the curve. And now we can further uh, expand it by splitting these brackets. So remember uh, to change the signs inside the bracket. So here we change the signs. Now we are going to minimize this E. In order to minimize this E, we have to use the principle of these scares, which tells us to differentiate as many unknown constants involved in the equation. So first we have to differentiate it with respect to a and take the result equals to zero. The second we have to differentiate with respect to b and third we have to differentiate now with respect to c as well because there is another constant now. First we differentiate it. So on differentiating with respect to a we get partial e over partial a is equals to two times sigma equals to 1 to n y i a x i square and minus b x i minus c into minus uh, 2 x i so the, uh, sorry not 2 x i it should be x square uh, there will be x square okay this is the first derivative with respect to a similarly uh, we have to also put equals to 0 and similarly for the second derivative of b, this gives you sigma i is equals to 1 to n y i a x i square b x i minus c and whenever you differentiate this, uh, it gives you x i only and the third equation with respect to c, this provides you sigma equals to 1 to n y i minus a x i square bxi minus c and the constant derivative is of course uh, there is one there so now